In our last video, we considered cutting a small plasmid with a restriction enzyme and then separating out those fragments using gel electrophoresis. And this is fine if you're characterizing a plasmid. However, if you take a bunch of human genomic DNA and cut it with a restriction enzyme, you don't just see, they don't just get a few fragments, there are tens of thousands of ECOR1 fragments in the human genome. And if you take all of that DNA and you run it out on a gel, you don't get individual bands because there are so many fragments, which you see is a smear. Our ability to find a single band, a single fragment in this smear is based on the fact that two single strands of DNA with complementary bases stick to each other. That is to say, they hybridize. And so, if I know a little bit about the base sequence in the band that I want, let's imagine that the band is quite long, but let's say that in the middle of that is a sequence ACAC, and this is a little simplistic. Generally speaking, I'm going to be looking for maybe 20 bases or so. Then I can chemically synthesize a short piece of complementary single-stranded DNA, and of course in this case that sequence is TG. Let's go ahead and put it over here. T T, G, T, G. And once I've chemically synthesized this, I can label it. I can either make it fluorescent or I can make it radioactive. I'll go ahead and indicate that with a little asterisk like that. Then I can take my smear of DNA and I can transfer that onto a piece of filter paper. I'll take my filter paper, I'll squirt some of my probe on it, I'll give it a nice mix, I'll heat it up, and then I'll slowly cool it back down in the presence of my probe. And when that happens, my probe sticks to its complementary sequence, right? This used to be a double-stranded piece of DNA, but when I heated it up, I separated those two strands and because I put a lot of probe in here, that probe is going to stick to its complementary sequence on the single strand of DNA. And so, let's imagine that my piece of DNA is right there, right? Then I take my filter paper and I expose it on a piece of X-ray film and my band is the only one that lights up because I'm seeing a signal from my probe, right? My probe is labeled, it's fluorescent or it's radioactive. This entire process, cut your DNA, run it on a gel, transfer it to um, a piece of filter paper, and then probe it with a fluorescent or ra radioactive probe. This entire process is called southern blotting. And Southern does not have anything to do with the direction south. It's actually named after Ed Southern, who was the guy who invented it. And so a Southern blot like this can tell me the size of a fragment of DNA, just like gel electrophoresis, but it can find that piece of DNA in a very complex mixture, which is not something that gel electrophoresis is good at. However, it just lets me see it. It lets me measure the size of that band. What if I want to capture that fragment? What if I want to analyze it further? Our last method, which is called PCR, can help us do just that.